If you are sitting there asking why Beard is already sitting within the deep dark ruins, you must be one of those folks who have not watched him already go through them the other day. So let me ask you something. The heck are you doing here? Go watch that one first, you pleb. But if you're ready to continue our ruin series here, join me now as I go through and break down the many and mighty recipes that await you once it's time for some ancient pseudosciencing. But first, one thing to always remember. Don't go being dumb trying to stick around the station during a nightmare cycle. Even just the warning phase is bad too as you'll go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs in seconds due to the surrounding nightmare lights, and your nightmares will also come personified as they chase your booty all around. Just chill nearby until the cycle ends to save you any trouble. But speaking of trouble, remember when I suggested not to hammer these things? Well, even though I admit that the loot table for them is phenomenal, I still advise against it. But that being said, if you are going to go about it, your best bet is to hammer it down one swing at a time, dealing with anything that spawns first before you go striking the station again. Doing so will drastically improve your chances of not having your face ripped off, and you'll be alive to collect whatever loot is left over. Was it worth it though? Well, it could be, but it's up to you to decide if you want to risk it. You know what we won't be risking though? Resources, as our first ancient crafting item will serve as a tremendous help in keeping us from using too much. If you are concerned about constructing a construction amulet, don't worry. Green gems can be found in the tumbleweeds, down here in the ruins in great numbers, and dropped by dragonfly periodically. And as for the thule site and nightmare fuel, both are abundant down here. But what does it do? For one, while wearing it, you'll notice a symbol of the Ami paired with all crafting recipes available to you. And that is because a construction amulet makes it so that you only need half of the materials you'd normally use upon crafting anything in-game. You can use it a total of five times, and it also comes with a sanity regen of plus two per minute. But you won't benefit from that down here, unfortunately. I recommend you always craft one of these before making anything else in order to spare you some valuable resources. But let's talk the Thule Site Medallion, yes? The medallion is a physical item within the game that actually details the current state of the nightmare cycle throughout the cave, and it does so through color, and the player can even examine the item itself. If the cycle is in its calm phase, the medallion will show no color, but it will begin to show signs of red come the warning phase. Ultimately, it will glow really red when the nightmare cycle is in full swing, but again, the player can just always examine it to know if and when it is building up or dwindling down within the different phases. So, is it worth it? Well... Not really, as there's audio cues for the various nightmare stages, but hey, it's something, right? But on to the cool stuff, like the mag luminescence. You'll need some more Thule Side and Nightmare Fuel, along with a luscious yellow gem. But again, the gem can be found down here by mining ancient statues or breaking broken clockworks. Or heck, through murdering Dragonfly once again. And the Ami not only emits a light radius, it provides a 20% increase to your movement speed, which can be easily stacked with walking canes, roads, etc. Oh, and it even has that little plus two sanity regen too. Careful though, the mag certainly doesn't last as long as it should, and if it does drop to 0%, it doesn't just sit in your inventory waiting to be recharged. It will actually just vanish forever, rendering the resources you spent trying to craft it pointless. So make sure you have some nightmare fuel around to prevent that from happening. Next to bats, the Intrepid Star Caller Staff. Now, here's one of the items that will probably require you to head back up north if you didn't think to bring some living logs with you, but the rest is easy to come by if you haven't already from clearing the ruins. 
The staff allows you to cast a dwarf star where you wish. And this star not only lasts for a full three and a half days, it provides light and heat in a significant radius, while also coming with a plus 25 sanity per minute regen if you stand near it. Plus, you can cook on the thing for Pete's sake. It's so good. And if you've been following along lately, you might have noticed me using these against Toadstool, both his normal and misery forms, in order to combat the darkness while down under, as well as just using them my advantage in the actual combat. Or, perhaps you would want to use them to keep warm during your bout with Claws during the brisk days of winter. That or go nuts with some crazy farming methods. A star caller staff is incredibly versatile. Get you one. But how about something destructive? Well, using some fuel, logs, and a potential pair of green gems, you can make yourself what is known as a deconstruction staff, and it may prove to save your bloody life, or at least make it a heck of a lot easier. At the cost of sanity, the staff will deconstruct any structure crafted in the exact resources used to craft said structure 100% of the time. However, with items it all depends on durability and what was used in the recipe. For example, two star collar staffs, each with polar opposite durabilities here. If you deconstruct an item of low durability, your return resources are in low numbers. But if you deconstruct one of high durability, you'll net more resources in return. But make note, you will never receive gems back when using the staff. They will always shatter. However, it can be abused, like with scaled flooring here. It takes one scale to make six tiles, but you can then deconstruct every tile to net one scale, meaning you can walk away netting five total scales from one craft. But I'm far too lazy to go about that, so instead I'll make an amulet that does some work for me. The Lazy Forager is next, and it sure does some fancy things. You see, upon equipping the Ami, it will automatically pick up items on the ground without the player having to do anything. It will pick up 225 items before it breaks, which is actually a lot all things considered, and has that same sanity regen as the other amulets before. But oh yeah, ever wonder how to get the loot from these cave holes you've seen around? Well, the only way is to equip one of these, and whatever is sitting there, usually more than just one item if it isn't just a gem, will poof right into your inventory. Speaking of poofing, we should mention the Lazy Explorer too. A rather expensive trinket, you'll actually need to bring your lovely walking canes down under in order to craft one. But don't fret, you won't lose that speed boost, as the Lazy Explorer still gives it to you. But this illustrious item comes with the added bonus of allowing the player to... Telepoof. Doing this causes the player to lose 15 sanity, however. But it is great if you need to escape with your butt intact, as you can just tell you across branches, rendering the chasing mob or mobs clueless as to what to do next, as you can just laugh in their faces. And it's also helpful in not only reaching the Fuel Weaver in the atrium, it's helpful in defeating him too. But don't worry about this just yet. Time for what might be the useless item in the game, all things considered, the pickaxe. It is both a pickaxe and a regular axe, so of course it uses both things to craft it, you dope. But it isn't just a normal axe, it's the luxury kind. When chopping, it loses 0.25% of its durability and can fell a tree in 12 swings instead of the usual 15. So, I guess that's cool. And when mining, it loses 0.75% of its durability and can break boulders in 5 smashes instead of 6. Oh wow, how not so efficient for an item in the frickin' ancient crafting tab for Pete's sake. Yup, this thing is completely worthless. 
But thank the seven that there aren't many useless items here, like the Thulsite Crown, an ancient armor piece that only uses Thulsite and Nightmare Fuel to craft. The crown has 840 durability, but absorbs 90% of physical damage, with the added possibility of spawning a force field around you when you get hit. The force field lasts for 4 seconds, has a 33% chance to form, prevents all damage, but the catch is that damage turns into taking away your sanity instead. And oh right, did I say all damage? I lied. Fire damage can and will make you a bit toasty. But you know what else is hot? The Thule Sight Suit and the Thule Sight Club. The next two items on our pseudo-science adventure. The suit has a durability of 1260 and can also absorb 90% of physical damage like the crown, but it also provides 3.3 plus sanity along the way and the club deals 59.5 damage per hit, the equivalent of a handbat, while also gifting the player a 10% speed boost and the chance for them to spawn a shadow tentacle. The tentacles last for 9 seconds total and can deal a significant amount of damage on top of what you're already dishing out. It's a very nice weapon, especially with this fantastic skin but it's up to you to decide on if it's better than just a single handbat with no durability. Oh, and then there's the houndiest shootiest, but don't worry about them for now. We will talk about them more once we know where to get the item needed to craft them actually is. So there you have it everyone, a showcase of the mystical wonders of the ancient pseudoscience station. If you wish to be wielding and boasting some of the best stuff around, you'll be needing to get your butt here. I hope this helped, I wish you luck down under, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!